number one gives us a pattern and it asks us how many small squares will be in step 10. So we have to look for the pattern and see if we can relate it to the step number so we don't have to keep drawing this pattern every time. So if we look in step one, we see that there's two squares. Then they end up with um, three and three. So they get, you know, one more square added here and then a whole nother row. And so the pattern that I noticed, and if you want to get the squares, right, this is two times one will give us two squares if we do multiplication. This one will be three times two. This one is four times three. So if we take a look, we see the step number in each of these patterns, right? It's here, it's here, it's here. So if we continued this pattern, um, step 10, we would end up doing 10 times 11. So we'd have 10, a 10 by 11 rectangle. And so if we just multiply those two numbers together, 10 times 11, that gives us 110 squares in our 10th step. Number two gives us two different dot patterns and it wants us to know how many dots will there, there be in step four of each pattern. So we see in step zero in pattern A, there's none. Then there's four in step one. And then they add in this next row, right? So we get another four added here. And then in step three, we have the previous one and another row of four. So we kind of see that they're adding another set of four, which is really just multiplication. So again, this is step one times four, step two times four, step three times four, so in this next step, it's gonna be four by four, which is um, 16. And then um, when we look at pattern B, so this one, let's try and look for what, um, there's something that looks like it stays the same, right? So we see this dot here, we see kind of these two dots on the outer edge that stay the same. And then in step zero, we also have those two dots. So then this new part of the pattern in each step, we've got one dot here, we've got four dots here, then we end up with nine dots here. But if we try and compare that to the step number, it kind of uncovers itself more in this step three where we see that this is actually a three by three square, right? So this is really three squared here. This is a two by two, which is two squared. And then this is just one, but really that's the same as one squared. So we're really doing the step number squared plus two. Okay, so the step squared and then we have those two dots that stay the same in each pattern. So if we're looking at the fourth one, right, we're gonna end up with a four by four or a four squared, which is 16, and these two extra dots. And so again, if, I mean, in this one, you could just draw out the pattern since it's the next one, or you can think about it, but then we have 16 um, plus two for that one. So we get, we get 18 in pattern B. Then it says, which pattern shows a quadratic relationship? And quadratic means that you're squaring the variable. And so that's happening in pattern B because we squared that step number because it's the step squared plus two. So this, um, this squaring right here makes it quadratic. Number three, here are descriptions for how two dot patterns are growing. So pattern A gives us step two has 10 dots and it's growing by three each time. Pattern B has the total number of dots can be expressed by two n squareds plus one, where n is the step number. 
draw each pattern um, from steps zero to three. So I'm just going to write out step zero, step one, step two, and then step three. So we can draw these. Um, these answers can vary. So your dot patterns do not need to look like mine. One thing I noticed in pattern A is they gave me step two. And so I was 10 dots and then we added three each time. So I just wanted to go backwards and subtract three and then subtract three again so that I knew what I was going to be at in step zero. So 10 is step two, seven is step one, four is step zero. So that told me what I needed to start with. So I'm going to start with four in step zero. And again, yours can look different than mine, but that's just what I'm going to do. Then it needs to increase by three each time. So we need step zero and then we need three more dots. Then step two needed to have the four dots, the three dots. Okay, so that's from step one. Then it needed to add on three more. And if we look, that's nine plus one is 10. So we get that. Then step three needs to have step two. And then an additional three dots. So for me, I liked this because I could see the original number. And then I could see that they're adding three each time. So then we get this additional three each time. So again, yours can be different. That's just what I came up with. Then, um, and again, yours can be different in this one too. Um, but this one's similar to the one we did in the last one because it's got the squared and it's got this plus one that just stays. And so if we plug in zero, so step zero is not going to have this, right? Because that's going to zero out. So zero squared is zero times two is zero. So step one or step zero is just going to have one dot. Then step one is going to have that one dot plus it's going to have two one squareds. So I'm just going to do one on this side and one on this side. So I can kind of see here's my one squared and my one squared. So I have two one squareds and the original one dot. So then step two is going to have that one dot and it's going to have two two squareds. So over here I'm going to do one two squared. Okay, so there's a two by two square. And then here's a two by two square. And then step three is going to have that one and it's going to have two three by three squares. So I'm going to draw one of the three by three squares here and one of the three by three squares here. But so then in this pattern, I'm hoping it's easier to see that we've got, you know, this is the n squared. Here's a step number squared and here's a step number squared. We've got two of those plus one extra dot. Here's the three by three square and a three by three square. So we have two of those and an extra dot. One squared and the extra dot. Zero squares and the dot. So again, that's how I came up with it. Yours could be different than mine. Number four, each expression represents the total number of dots in a pattern where N represents the step number. Select all expressions that represent a quadratic relationship between the step and the total of number of dots. If you need to, you can sketch um, a few dot patterns first. But quadratic means that you square something. And remember that squaring something means multiplying it by itself. So we could see a square represented like this, n to the second power. Two times n is not squaring it n times n, this is a different way to write out n squared. So this would be a quadratic. Adding, no. Adding, no. Dividing, no. Number five, the function C gives the percent. So C gives the percentage of homes using only cell phones 
X years after 2004. Explain the meaning of each statement. So remember, this is your input or your X in this case. So this is saying 10 years after 2004. So that's 2014. So in 2014, 35% of homes, that output, were using only cell phones. B gives us the input of X and the output of 10. So this is X years after 2004, because we don't know, because it's just telling us X. So X years after 10, 000, or 2004 is when 10% of homes were only using cell phones. Then it asks us how these two things are different. So in this one, we know the number of years, right? So we know it's 10 years after. So this is um, representing the output at, you know, 10, which is 2014. So we know, we know this is just giving us the output at 2014. We know how many years and we knew, um, in this case, we actually knew the output, right? And here it's saying we don't know the input. So this one is just giving us that we know the percent, but we don't know what year it is yet. meaning we don't know the input here. Number six, here are some lengths and widths and areas of a garden whose perimeter is 40 feet. And so presumably this is a rectangle, even though they didn't say that, um, but the perimeter is 40. Complete the table with the missing measurements. So remember that for area, we do length times width. And in this case, our length plus our width is going to be 20 because that's half of that 40 because we'd have two L's and two W's, two lengths and two widths to total 40. So 4 plus 16 is that 20. 4 times 16 gives us 64. 8 plus 12 is 20. 8 times 12 is 96. 10 plus 10 would give us the 20, and 10 times 10 would give us 100. 12 plus 8 would get us the, the new width. 12 times 8 was 96. 14 plus 6 would give us that 20, and then 14 times 6 would give us 84 for the area. And then 16 and 4 would give us that 64. What length and width do you think will produce the largest possible area? And so if we look at the table, we see that that's the 10 by 10. Number seven, a bacteria population is 10,000 when it's first measured and then doubles each day. Use this information to complete the table. Notice that this says it's in thousands. So the original population was 10,000. So we're going to just put a 10 here. And then if that doubles, it will be at 20. Doubles again will be at 40. Then be careful because this jumps to 5. So we're going to double it again to 80 and then to 160 and then to 320. And then you're going to need to double it five more times to get to um, 640 and then 128, 1,280, um, 2560, 5120, and then ultimately to 10,000, 
240 at this one. So you just keep doubling that five more times. So if it's D, then we double this however many times D is. So D is going to be the exponent. So we would get two to whatever power times 10 for whatever D is. And that's also the way we would, we would write our equation. So this one's relating P. So let's do P equals... And then 10,000, just 10 in this case, times the growth factor, which is two, it's doubling. And then D being the number of days, and that will be your exponent. Um, oh, and then I skipped B. Which is the first day after the antibiotic is given that the population is more than 1 million? Now be careful, that's 1,000 thousands. Okay, so when is it more than this? And um, so we would want to look at a couple more of these. So at six, we would have been at 640,000. If I just start at five, multiply that by two, then multiply this by two, and we get 1,280,000, 1, which is really 1.28 million. So this is day seven that that happened. Number eight, graph the solutions to this inequality. So there's multiple different ways you can do this. One of the ways is by graphing the intercepts. And so the intercepts, when we're at the x-intercept, that means that our y-coordinate is zero. So then I just can kind of ignore that because negative three times zero is zero. So seven x equals 21 will give me my x-intercept. So we'll just divide by seven and we get that x equals three, and then we can plot that point. Then when we go to do the y-intercept, okay, so the y-intercept is gonna be when the x-coordinate is zero. So seven times zero is just zero, so then we'll look at negative three y equals 21. So we'll divide by negative three and we get that our y-intercept is negative seven. So we'll plot that point. Then you wanna look at your inequality and see what type of line it is. And so when we look here at this inequality, it has a line underneath it. This means that it's gonna be a solid line. So when you grab a ruler or whatever and you connect these two um, dots, it needs to, they need to be connected with a solid line. Okay, so we'll do a solid line. Then the fact that it's an inequality means that there's shading. So then we wanna check where we would shade. So I just like to plug in the point zero, zero and say, is zero, zero part of, of the solution set? So is zero, zero a solution? If it is, then you shade it. If it's not, then you don't. So we'll plug zero, zero in here. So seven times zero minus three times zero, is that greater than or equal to 21? Well, this is zero minus zero, which is zero. Is zero greater than or equal to 21? No. So that means that zero, zero is not part of the solution set. So it's not shaded. So that means that our shading would be underneath this line instead of above it. 